Before we move to the next question, next uh, thing, I want to ask you this question, like a short exercise. What happens if we don't have a laser beam, but we have individual photons? If we have uh, photons that, like, we reduce the intensity of light s in such a way that at a single time we have just one photon flies through the max zander interferometer what happens then yeah, in the simplest case imagine we don't have our uh, our, our uh, piece of glass here we just have uh, the case that we had before uh, where detector one would have all the interference and uh, detector two would have all the constructive interference detector one wouldn't see any clicks uh, what happens if we throw one by one photons? Uh, think about it uh, just a second, and then uh, we can and then continue. So, with a single photon, uh, one is tempted to make an analysis as follows: a single photon goes along particular path, and particular path in the beginning. For example, after the beam splitter, single photon goes like this it chooses one of the paths for example it chose the blue path yeah. it chooses one of the paths and after the first beam splitter goes along it so as it goes along the first path it uh, is reflected from the mirror and then on the second beam splitter it chooses again so sometimes it would choose sometimes it would choose this path sometimes it would choose this path and we what we would see we would see sometimes this detector firing sometimes this detector firing then also photon could choose to go on another path like for example this path and then go through the beam splitter and again on the second beam splitter it again gets split into two paths and again we would have sometimes one detector firing sometimes the other detector firing yeah basically it's the same four paths but just now it's 25% uh, probability to each and we would have uh, detectors uh, firing in 50-50 but the interesting result of quantum mechanics is that if you throw photons one by one through this setup it seems like it seems like as long as you don't know as long as you don't know how uh, where the photon goes inside the beam splitter yes because we don't watch how the photon goes inside the beam splitter it takes actually two paths and all of the analysis we did is valid it would still go out only to the detector too although we throw photons one by one one by one and if we would look at them taking we would find them taking some path yes we always find photon if we would look at it for example here we sometimes find it with 50 percent probability you find the photon here but uh, if we don't look at it, we allow it to go somehow through the beam splitter. It somehow interferes with itself and uh, exits as if the light, as, as our analysis is valid. So constructive interference only into detector D2. So our analysis is valid also for the uh, case of single photon. It's quantum mechanical result, which is strange and interesting at the same time. Now let's move to the case of classical wall. Yeah, we have still our analysis. Now we throw photons with, uh, like let's say we throw photons now one by one because we want to get as quantum as possible. Yes, we still have our beam splitter, beam splitter, mirror, mirror, two detectors. But now on the way of the light, yes, we have light that comes from here and it may go through here, it may go through here, and then it would go 
constructively into detector 2. Yes, our simplest analysis without any uh, phase shifts in the middle. But let's imagine that we now put a brick wall, a huge classical brick wall here. Brick wall that makes one of the paths inaccessible to photon. Yeah, basically it just hits the wall. How our analysis looks in this case? Well, what's the chance for a photon to hit the wall? It's the, the same chance as for the photon to go through the beam splitter and get reflected through the beam splitter 1 and get reflected. That's 50%. 50% of the cases we hit the wall. In 50% of the cases, we take the second path, take this blue path. And here we are separated on the beam splitter. Beam splitter puts us either here or here into detector 1 or into detector 2. But the main thing here is that because of the wall, there is nothing uh, for us to interfere with. So each of the detectors will have their share of photons coming to them. There will be 25% of photons coming here and 25% of photons coming here. Yeah, so now you see that we have different statistics from what we had before. Yes, if in case where we have no wall and purely quantum system, we have 100% of photons coming to detector 2. Yes, here, constructive interference. Now, if we put a wall on the way, we have totally different statistics. First of all, of course, half of the photons we just are lost. But even the photons which are not lost, their statistics is changed. We have some photons coming to detector 1, some photons coming to detector 2, so statistics has changed and it's an interesting thing that we will use further on in an interesting thought experiment.